What is up, guys? Simple Sports back with another episode. And we're talking more about the NBA playoffs, obviously, underway. We're getting into Game 4, Game 5 territory with all of the series that aren't done, which is, I think, the only one is the New Orleans series. Um, that was quick, done, dusted. Thanks for showing up, Trail Trailblazers, but thanks for nothing. Uh, so, playoffs so far have been absolutely outstanding, um, outside of three series for me. New Orleans Blazers obviously was not compelling, nor was it competitive. New Orleans pretty much just wiped the floor with the Blazers, or swept them, if you want to call it that, obviously. Um, it was awesome watching AD sort of finally arrive, quote-unquote. Um, we all knew what his talent level was, but there's a certain there's a certain ceiling on you. There's like a glass ceiling until you start winning in the playoffs. You can't really go any further than that. Um, and so he's finally here. He broke through the glass, um, and and he has established himself as a, a top three, five player in the NBA at minimum, at least in my opinion. Um, but the series itself, no interest really. Uh, Washington and Toronto, uh, two, in my opinion, underachieving teams. Neither one is pretty to watch. Um, they're a perfect match for each other. Neither team seems to want to take control. Toronto seems to be far more relaxed than Washington is. Washington seems to be taking it very, very personal that they were just sort of dismissed this postseason, which I think is rightfully so, but it is what it is. Um, and all they did was, you know, protected home court, which is to be expected. I still expect Toronto to come out of it, but man, not super interested in that one either. And the Bucks and Celtics series, this year series should be over if everyone that proclaims Giannis is the next best player in the NBA. Um, I don't see that. I think he's an awesome talent. I think he will be one of the best players in the NBA, but the best player, I don't think he'll ever reach that. Um, no Kyrie. Obviously, no Gordon Hayward. He didn't play all, all year, obviously. Um, and a couple other guys have been in and out. Where's their star? They don't have a star. Um, so they're and they're going toe to toe with the Bucks. Um, so I, I just don't buy Giannis as that guy. Shout out to the Celtics, by the way, Brad Stevens and, J and Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum and, and on down the list. Um, no quit in them whatsoever. And that's one thing that I really, really, really like um, in my teams and players, people that I follow. I don't like people that lay down. Um, for the L, um, if you're going to go out, go out swinging at least, Jesus Christ. Um, but with all that said, let's move on to the, the meat of what I want to talk about today, which is a couple of different series, Cavs Pacers, Sixers Heat, um, Rockets T-Wolves, and of course tonight, the Thunder and the Jazz, and the Rockets T-Wolves also play tonight. Looking forward to both of those games. But let's start with the Cavs and the Pacers. Um, game four, the Cavs let that one slip away. Um, I think they had a chance to put their foot on the throat of LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers, and they didn't. They let him get up. They will likely regret it. Um, I picked the Cavs originally in five. This game or this series really just turned on its head really after game one because I didn't see that one coming. And then even game three, I uh, although I gave... I put a lot more confidence into the Pacers after game one and game two, but game three, I still wasn't a hundred percent sold. I am thoroughly convinced now that either the Cavs will lose this series or they will win it in seven. I don't think they're making it out of here outside of that. I don't think they're making it out of here in six games. Um, Oladipo has gotten progressively worse over each game. And I think, I, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. If, I don't want to say game one was an anomaly, um, but he's certainly somewhere, I don't think that is his consistent point. Um, I think he's somewhere in between 22 to 26 points, um, per game. Uh, I think that's what he could be at for the playoffs. Um, he had a couple of bad games. Again, he gotten progressively worse stats wise anyway, just from a raw numbers perspective over each game. Long story short, I think whoever wins the next game, game five, will eventually win the series in game six, um, unless it's the Cavs. Um, I think the Pacers, if they win game five, will turn around and win game six as well. Um, here's the thing. If the, if the Pacers want to win this series and knock the king off his throne, 
I think they had better win game five. I don't think they can afford to have LeBron say, okay, I can finally get out of this mess at least for a couple of days until I get to the next series because I'm, I, you know, I got the Pacers facing the elimination game. I don't think if they get to that point, I don't think they're going to have enough to be able to stop LeBron in an elimination game. Now, if it's shoes on the other foot, I don't know. Maybe they have a boost of confidence. Who knows? Um, but they blew a golden opportunity down the stretch of game four with a few bad possessions, few bad shots, a couple of turnovers, and they didn't capitalize on the Cavs' mistakes down the stretch either. Um, so all eyes will be playing on the TV for game five, and, and I'm pretty pumped. I can't wait for that one. Um, Sixers in the heat. This has been one of the most competitive series in the playoffs that I can remember in quite a while. Just Just taking out the... The magnitude of the game and the circumstances, whether, you know, what round it's in and things like that. Just looking at the series separate as a, as itself, this has been one of the most competitive series I've seen in, in, in a while. Um, it's been a straight-up fight, and I love it. It's physical. It's chippy. It's, there's trash talking. There's, there's rough play. Um, and the story is great as well. You have, you know, the young rookies and the youngins versus the vet team and D-Wade. And Wade may go out, but he ain't going out like a chump. And that's why, you know, he's always been one of my favorite players. He has a similar mentality to Kobe, who was my favorite player. Um, so, you know, that comparison, it makes sense. Um, but Roy Simmons and Joel Embiid um, are alone, and they are the truth. Um, I want the Heat to win the next two games just so it goes to seven. Um, because I could only wish every series was as competitive and as feisty as this one. Because, like I said, this has been one of the best ones as far as a competitive standpoint that I've seen in quite a while. I want more of it. Um, they're obviously up 3-1 right now, so we'll see how it goes. It's likely over. Maybe another game, but likely over. Um, but, man, it has been fun, 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 fun to watch. Uh, Rockets and the T-Wolves, as I thought going into this, I don't really trust the Rockets they won a game they won games one and two before dropping game three and Carl Anthony Towns hasn't played well really at all um played better in game three certainly but not nearly what we expected um I I thought we were going to see Anthony Davis like performance from Carl Anthony Towns maybe not quite that dominant but somewhere in that realm right and they we just haven't um but based on what I've seen, it, it sort of validates for me. I'm not a, a buyer in the Houston stock as a champion. Now, can they come out of the West? Sure. There, there's there's paths for them to the finals. Um, can they escape the series? Yes, of course. Um, but tonight's game is huge. And even if they do get out of this one, I, I've seen enough to be convinced. No way are they beating a healthy Golden State. Um, which, speaking of Golden State, really quickly, um, they weren't really able to complete the sweep against the Spurs, but I think that they would. I, I didn't think that they would. I always felt like there would be enough fight in the Spurs to get at least a game, and they did just that. It was a phenomenal game. It took some miraculous shots from Ginobili and LaMarcus Aldridge at the end. That game was just meant to be for the Spurs. It, they just weren't meant to get swept. If you watch the game... The Warriors clearly were the better team. They made the comeback, and then it took some. It took a bank shot from Aldridge, which I still don't know how that went in. And then a little fadeaway from Ginobili at the end. God bless Ginobili. He's one of my favorite players too, because he's he's got that same mentality. There's no quit in Ginobili whatsoever, and he's clutch too, which is always nice um, to have. But that fadeaway, there's no way that that wouldn't go in twenty. More, he couldn't get that to go in again if he tried. Um, I mean, it was like, he wasn't just fading away. Like he was pretty much going the other direction, like head first. And then he just kind of turned around, flipped it up and in. it was a pretty looking shot, but it, I, you know, th- they were just meant to win that game. So it is what it is. Um, I still think they'll probably close it out in the next one. Um, we will see. Um, and it may not be the worst thing for them. It may give them a couple of days at least a couple more days to for Steph to rest um, and 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 also for the team to kind of keep their flow going. I know rest is important, especially in the playoffs, but you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be too rested, too, too rusty. And I mean, last year was different because they had their full team. This year may be a little bit different just because Steph is out. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. It may not be the worst thing to happen. 
Um, he could be back just a game or two sooner. If they get a couple of extra days, who knows, which could make all the difference. You never know. Um, but we'll see. And lastly, Thunder and the Jazz. And here we go, man. I am disappointed in the Thunder. Um, I picked this to go seven games, but the eye test from what I've seen tells me it's not going to. And not only is it not going to go seven games, I don't think the Thunder will be coming out the victor once it's all said and done. I really don't. They look like what a lot of people predicted they would, which is a couple of stars with no real chemistry, a lot of ball stopping, a lot of my turn, your turn. You take this shot, I'll take that shot, and he'll take the next shot. And it's simply going to, that's only going to take you so far. Um, I mean, you, at some point, you need chemistry, you need teamwork, you need a plan, you need some sort of attack, some sort of strategy. And their strategy seems to be whoever has a hot hand, let them just go one on one or drop it off to someone else at the rim, kick it out to someone for a spot up three. Doesn't really seem to be a lot going on there. Uh, like I said, a lot of my turn, your turn. And, you know, Again, that's just not going to work, but so much in the playoffs, depending on who you get. And unfortunately, they got a solid team that they're facing in the Utah Jazz. Um, and it, it, it would be an indictment on Russ, unfortunately. Um, I've always said I love Russ. I love to watch him play, but he makes some, some I don't know, he makes some crucial mistakes. Yesterday, he didn't take a, a, a single shot in the fourth quarter. Um, I don't know what that's all about. Um, I, listen, if they had gotten matched up with the Warriors or the Rockets first round and lost, I think it would be understandable. Um, but not to be disrespectful of the Jazz, but I don't know many people that didn't think the Thunder were coming out of that series. Um, but Rubio and Mitchell and Gobert have been outstanding. Uh, I mean, the Jazz as a whole have been outstanding. The composure from Mitchell has been phenomenal to watch with him being a rookie. And, I mean, all year, rookies have been putting in quality work, right? Ben Simmons. If you just go, this is just this year's rookies that have been outstanding or at least at some point during the season were phenomenal, right? Um, and, again, that's from just this year. Ben Simmons, Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell, Dennis Smith Jr., Kyle Kuzma, even Alonzo Ball had a pretty solid year, um, and he's definitely had a really solid stretch of games uh, about halfway through the season. Um, Laurie Marketing, um, I, I, listen, it's a fantastic breath of fresh air considering usually NBA rookies rarely or barely contribute even half of what some of these guys have done in their first year. Um, so for Mitchell to be the leader of a competitive NBA team, um, that's in the playoff is is a sight to see. And Russ has some work to do because let me tell you something right now. He cannot get eliminated by a team with their best players being Ricky Rubio, Rudy Gobert, and Donovan Mitchell. Not to say that those players are not good because they are, but you can't have the label of superstar and MVP and then lose to these guys who everyone deems as average or maybe above average except for donovan mitchell who some people think is going to be a flat-out superstar i think so as well but my point being you can't lose to them you simply can't you got Melo, paul george and last year's mvp mr triple double two years in a row russell westbrook you can't lose to the jazz period sorry but you can't so that's all i got for today i just wanted to get my thoughts out so far on what we've gotten uh, what have you gotten to see? It's been a fun and exciting playoffs as far as I've said. We got a little ways to go, um, and I'm pretty pumped about it all. So I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.